So, I've got a big video project coming up soon that I've been planning for a few months, and among the many questions about equipment I've had to consider is image stabilization. And no matter how good in-lens or in-body image stabilization systems get, and they are getting good, nothing will probably ever beat the final output quality of stabilizing your camera itself. And for the project I'm working on, I'm on a tight budget and a very tight time frame, and I need the absolute best possible footage from my camera. So, to improve my handheld footage, and to open up the path to some professional looking camera movements, I decided the best way forward was a motorized gimbal. I have tried using unmotorized glide cam style devices before several times, but I absolutely hated them with a passion, finding them very difficult to balance and to control. Also, they tend to be a little on the big side, and for this particular project I'm looking to keep a fairly low profile as I'm filming, so I wanted a small camera and gimbal. So I got in touch with Zhihun Tech to ask them if I could try out one of their crane motorized gimbals, and they kindly sent one all the way to Wales for me, which I appreciate. Full disclosure though, I'm not being paid in any way at all to make this video. The gimbal I'm currently testing out is their Crane M model, rather than their standard Crane model, as I wanted to try out a gimbal that was as small and light as possible, while still being capable enough to handle an APS-C mirrorless camera and lens, and that's the direction I'm going in with my video work at the moment, APS-C mirrorless cameras. I'll actually be using a Sony A6300 soon, but for now I'm testing this gimbal with my little Canon EOS M3. If you turn its sharpness levels way down, then it's a camera that's capable of getting quite usable footage actually, although the Sony camera will obviously be quite an upgrade. This gimbal is designed to have a maximum payload of 650 grams, just enough for a small camera, maybe even a small digital SLR, and a relatively small lens. Now the Canon EOS M3 is a very small and lightweight camera, so actually I could have it mounted with this lovely Samyang fisheye lens. As you can see, we're just under the weight limit here. Using a lighter combination, like with a standard kit lens, is an even better idea, as you'll reduce the strain on the gimbal's motors, but really anything under 650 grams, camera and lens combined, should be fine. So, the Crane M really is quite small, and comes in a decent enough case, and everything you need is right there. The gimbal itself, a strap, remote control, USB cable, batteries, and a charger. I'll be taking a look at remote control possibilities in a later video, as well as how to use the double-handed grip, which comes separately. You don't need any extra tools, or Allen keys, or anything else to put it all together. It takes rechargeable 25600 type batteries. No, they're not the lower voltage type C batteries which you can buy in the shops. And in my tests, they ran for about 10 hours, which is pretty good, although the unit doesn't come with any spare batteries. You insert the batteries, positive side up, and screw the bottom part in. The build quality of the unit is very good, with tight tolerances. Next up is balancing the camera onto the gimbal itself. Don't turn the gimbal on until the camera is fitted and balanced, you could damage the motors. The gimbal is able to spin right around 360 degrees without any hard stops at all, which is definitely really useful. Balancing the camera as well as you can is important and you'll need to do it each time you fit the camera on or change the lens, which can be a little bit annoying. It takes 3 or 4 minutes to do. You need to do it as well as possible to reduce the strain on the gimbal's motors. I found it quite easy to learn though. There are four points on the three axes where the camera needs to be balanced. You can tell the camera is balanced when it no longer falls in any direction when you touch it or turn it around. First you move the camera forward and back on the mounting plate until it no longer falls under its own weight either way. The tilt axis also needs to be balanced at the motor point. You do that by holding the camera directly upwards and adjusting the balance position forward and back until the camera holds in place without dropping either way. Next, there's the roll axis. Adjust the balance until the camera no longer rolls around. And finally, the pan axis. 
For this, you should hold the unit out and adjust the balance until the camera holds forward instead of flipping around either way. And now you can turn the unit on. Hold down the power button and after a couple of seconds, the camera snaps into place. When turned on, the unit starts in pan following mode. That means it will hold the camera forward and steady, but you can pan the camera left and right just by twisting the handle, and all the turning movements are nicely damped to make everything look smooth. You can tilt the camera up and down in this mode using the joystick. If you click on the mode button one time, you're in locking mode. There, every axis is locked and the camera will stay facing forward. You can change its position using the joystick on the unit. Some speed variation is possible to a small extent depending on how far you push the joystick. Slow and fast. If you click on the mode button twice, then you enter pan and tilt mode, where the camera both pans and tilts according to your own movements, which is very intuitive. I've been experimenting with this gimbal for a couple of weeks now, and I'm getting used to it pretty quickly. Here's some footage I've shot using the Samyang 8mm fisheye lens on my Canon EOS M3. All these shots were taken in pan and tilt mode. This is the city of Cardiff. As I walked with the gimbal, I held it close to my body for extra stability, and to keep a lower profile. As a result, no one seemed to give me a second glance, even walking through crowds. After a while, I came to learn that for establishing shots, it's far better to move the camera nice and slowly. With the gimbal attached, it's tempting to start moving all over the place and get a little carried away. This shot was taken in pan following mode, and I used a monopod to give the effect of using a crane. Considering it was a windy day and my first attempt of such a manoeuvre, I think it looks fairly good. I'm very happy with the movement and damping of the Shihun Crane M, and I'm going to be using it a lot more, so I'll be making another video in a few weeks, especially to see how it works on my new Sony camera. It's worked for me just fine so far without any problems at all. The Shihun Crane M is priced at about £450. It's an investment, but really, for a good quality motorised gimbal, that strikes me as being quite good value. It's a really good option, nice and low profile, and it can add a very professional look to your videos.